Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being with me. Um, awesome. So today I'm going to be talking about pivoting across industry, because for some people, you might know me as Dr. Claire Iluka. That was my uh, maiden name, my, my dad's name. And then in the last uh, five... Ooh, I'm going to get in trouble now. I've been married since 2016, so people will know me as Dr. Claire Anyam Osigwe, BEM, British Empire Medalist. And I got that medal. I'm the first black woman in the country to be honoured for my services to dermatology. Um, I guess I've dropped off these names recently just because I've pivoted. Um, I was just saying to another doctor, a uh, black woman, Dr. Linda, outside, um, that actually, because I felt as though I had climbed many mountains, 20 years worth of work, I somehow was able to squeeze into five years um, at Preme. I came to a place in my mind where I actually felt like the industry was shifting. It was becoming more kind of makeup oriented, or oriented around the 2016, 17 mark. This was the rise of sort of like the Kylie Jenners, that kind of contoured look. And I'm very much a classic beauty. And um, I would solved a lot of problems. I was looking at um, eczema skin, psoriasis, all the more serious skin types. And uh, my husband is a film producer and the founder of the British Urban Film Festival and Awards, which has been going for 17 years now. And he has been honoured for his services to black film. And so um, it was actually my dream to direct a movie. Um, I left film to go into my second love, Plan B, as you will, because I felt unwelcome in the film arena and I think our voices are still very much underrepresented, especially the black British experience outside of the world of poverty and crime um, on screen na here nationally and internationally. So um, yeah, today is about my journey. I'm going to try and condense this down because we're on a time. The idea of plan B, um, being an apprentice, levelling up this term to mastery, throwing away the plan B and then building character and lessons. So, oh, okay, is that, is that, okay, I'll, I'll leave that there. No worries. So my journey. So I started my life as an entrepreneur, I guess at the age of five. I remember selling ice cream in cones. Um, my best friend, Kerry, her mum would give us 50p every week. And because my mum had five children, she's a single mum. My dad died when I was um, a little bit older, but my dad was hardly there working, obviously. She didn't have money, £2.50 every day, to give all five of us to go and get an ice cream. So I said, you know what? Me being Claire, the problem solver of the family, do you know what? We'll get that 50p from Kerry's mum. We'll buy, spend 30p on a cone of you know, vanilla ice cream, get the cones, and we started selling those to the other children. And we undercut the ice cream man and his fancy van and actually sold our ice creams for 40p so we were 10p cheaper and that 10p back in 1990 went a long way right hubba bubba I, you know coca-cola whatever us kids wanted to eat and, and enjoy and so i realized i was onto something and then by the age of 10 i was selling other different bits and bobs at school getting told off merch getting confiscated but i knew then like from a very young age that entrepreneurship was something that was for me i didn't know what the word was but i knew that i had a understanding of buying cheap selling high making staff create in your own way. Sadly, my dad did pass away, and then me and my sisters went into the care system, so I was brought up in a children's home um, and fostered and different things. But I always see a silver lining, and one of the silver linings was that next door to my children's home, I actually was the neighbour of the icon and legend Sade, the singer. So I'm like, how am I in this the most unfortunate circumstances of growing up in is it in care, but next door there's a superstar that my dad used to love and play Smooth Operator and all of her music and she lives next door and she's so approachable and so friendly and I thought to myself Do you know what if I can be this fortunate there's always something like God is always working for you there's always something to glean even if you're in the most negative circumstances there's always something positive there's always that thread and so anyway I was the first person to go to finish school then get my um, degree, and my degree was a joint honours. So it was an um, acting degree and a directing degree. But I always worked in beauty, because again, black female actors, 
in the 2000s, not really. Black female directors, we only had Ngozi at that stage and then Amma, so there was really nobody there. So I thought, you know what, I'm either going to starve because I don't have mum and dad to give me, you know, to pay for my living whilst I do internships for five years to jump on that ladder. What's the plan B? And so for me, my plan B was beauty. As a female, we love adorning ourselves, we love beauty, I love makeup. I got a part-time job at the body shop and then I started doing makeup for free for like two years um, for magazines, for brands like Adidas and Nike. I was their makeup girl. I was listening and learning and building relationships. But what I would find is that working for either Bobby Brown or The Body Shop or Mac, their products used to always break out my skin. And now us knowing ourselves as Africans and Afro-Caribbeans, black people, people of color, you know, we, we even, if, even if things are natural, not everything that's natural works for all of us. We have our own individual chemistry. And so I started mixing and blending my creams. Again, I assessed the situation and was like, hmm, well, if I start my own brand, and it doesn't work out, again, I'm going to be broke, I'm going to be starving, what can I do? So I came up with a plan B that I would get my teaching degree and some of that money could also fund the early days of my business. But if it doesn't work, then I can always make some income as a teacher. So I did that. So I became a drama teacher, English teacher, started my uh, products, pre-made skincare, in my uh, studio flat in King's Cross and me and five of my brethren, we started mixing, bottling, labelling all of my products. A bit like Wilfred, who I absolutely adore, and we've both spoke on panels at the uh, Black British Business Awards because we won our awards the same year, is that tenacity to kind of not seek permission, to just get on and get started. When I'm telling you now, you know, I, what I was doing back then, the, the handwritten labels, the sellotape, you know, I'd be like, uh, uh, but back then, in 2011, you know, being at Spitalfields Market, people are like, this is really interesting. And people are so forgiving when they know that your business is in its infancy. And people would pick it up. They could read those five or ten ingredients. There's nothing nasty, nothing. You know, that they're like, oh, what's that scientific term? And they're like, this is really natural, natural enough to eat. And so pre-made is a word that I created, premium formula. It's my premium formulations that were based, are based on an alkaline Ebo diet based basically, which I feel is the most naturalist diet, you know, my Caribbean counterparts would say an idol diet that I feel is beautiful for you to flourish mentally, physically. So I would always write these beautiful sayings on uh, my labels as well, because I think the way you start your day and the way you end your day says a lot about what's going to happen for you, your future. I always think very holistically and very spiritually. So again, this is my sort of apprenticeship stage of my life where I'm just sort of trying things out and crashing and burning. I remember um, being able to get 30,000 units into the glossy box and that's how my brand started to become a, a multi award winner. I think we were winning an award every four months because within the space of my first 18 months I got my product into the hands of 120,000 women by samples. Now back then glossy box and birch box were new so they actually were and I think it's because there was an Asian woman there and she was a really I can't even remember her name now it's escaping me but I'll, if it comes back to me later but she's moved on she's even got her own brand now I think I saw on LinkedIn a beautiful woman and um she paid me for the samples. Whereas Lady Gaga and Clinique and all the big brands, they would pay them to put the products in. But she was like, Claire, you're a baby in this. You're very new. You could not compete. So um, after that experience of producing in the thousands by hand, I'm like, look, man, I don't have 30 days to sit down with my friends and beg a favor. We need to start moving this on to factory. So I found a factory at the same time that my business had opened my flagship store in Whiteley's. Whiteley's doesn't exist anymore, but it's, it was, it's the first, I think, shopping centre in the UK ever. It's like a heritage listed building. It's a beautiful place. And my little old business was next door to Gap and Zara, and it was front and centre in this uh, on the ground floor in Whiteley's. This is 2014. Yeah, the same year I met my husband. And so um, we ended up that year sponsoring my husband's festival. We ended up, you know, doing in-store facials, and then I moved on the business to Harley Street. And then I was told, I think they called me up, and I thought, "Is that like, hi, Claire? Um, it's the cabinet office." And I was like, "Oh my God, have I not submitted my tax returns? I'm going to jail. I'm in trouble. What's gone wrong?" And like, no, we've been trying to email you and write to you at Whiteley's, but I think you've moved on now. And I was like, "Yeah, now I'm at number one Harley Street." And they were like, okay, you're, do you want to be honoured? Would you accept your medal? And I was like, 
And, uh, you kind of need to let us know because today's the cutoff point. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll accept it. Da da da. Because a lot of people don't for colonial reasons, and that's real. I thought to myself that I wanted to accept my honour because it was honouring my dad who came to this country penniless, put you know, died here, sadly very young, um, and to, to to use his name Iluka, his surname, to mean something more than just coming here with nothing. That he created children that have come here and done something that was really significant for me. And yeah, that's why that's why I, I took my medal. And so. Um, this is all going on, it's all going on, all going on. And so I'm becoming a bit of a master now. Um, I got myself, I, has anyone here read a book called Slay in Your Lane? Yeah, there's my chapter in Slay in Your Lane. Does anybody know the story? I'll tell it very quickly. Um, part of being a master is, again, what Wilfred was saying, so many gems. But it's been, you know, a little bit, you gotta be a titan, you gotta fight. Now, I was going, I remember this so vividly because at the time, my, hus my husband now, but he was my fiance at the time, his mum had passed away. And two days later, I went to pitch to Superdrug, um, my brand, and I, I put on a whole load of concealer, I was very distraught, but I'm a businesswoman. So I had to turn up and deliver. And that's about mastery. You know, a lot of times we're very, oh, this is going on for me. Listen, babe, this is business. This ain't the time for my dog at my dinner. Da, 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 da. Put your real life to the side, come with your professional head and win the day. And um, I basically got myself super drugs. I got myself, um, well, I didn't get into super drug because they looked at my formulations and then tried to do their own but it didn't work, but they still did that and they were very, very well known for doing that. And I'm happy now that they're suffering as a store because <laughs> they, <laughs> they helped a lot of black businesses not come up, okay? So that's between us as family, yeah? Um, and so, um, but there was a shopping channel and they were very interested in my brand, but I had to put my alias Nina Fredericks through the ranks, because every time I was talking to them as Dr. Claire, the founder, they didn't want to know because they could see who I was. But Nina Fredericks, just a random face that I picked from the 100th page on Google, she would get all the conversations, all the love. She's got no CV, she doesn't exist, yeah? And the day before I went to the shopping channel, I, I, as Nina, I'm like, hi, sorry, I, I'm going to be, you know, doing the French launch in Paris, but Dr. Claire will come and see you, and she's brilliant, and she founded the brand, and she knows everything, okay? And they were like, are you sure? Like, how long are you going to be away? Three months. <laughs> see Dr. Claire. <laughs> so I go down there with my suitcase of stuff, and they're like, oh, yeah, so how long have you been working at the brand? And I was like, man, well, I started crushing my cocoa butter and lavender in my flat in 20, 2009 actually, but didn't launch until 2011. So I guess the beginning, and then, you know, faces go red, I apologize, but then I apologize turns into, so what do you know? And when did, where did you qualify? And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, so when you're talking to Nina, yeah. did you ask Nina any of these questions? But because it's me, you're asking me all this nonsense. But then one of the buyers, their younger brother had eczema. And she said, look, Claire, if it works for my baby brother, we will buy this product but you're not gonna sell it on TV. We're gonna get a mo like an actor or a model presenter, because we just don't think the products will sell if you're selling it. And I said to myself, with all my awards, my BEM, my doctorate now, hmm, okay, no problem, fine. So two weeks later, she messaged me, she says, she even showed me pictures, Claire, my brother's Exmo is gone, I know it's gonna go, because my brand's multi-award winning now. She said, but do you know what? We gave it to our presenters and it's so complex. It's got such a beautiful natural story. You sell it. And so because by default, I was the person, like, that's what he, we're saying. Your brand has to be intrinsically a part of you. So that it's so un unmistakably you that people are buying it because of you, as well as all the quals and the, you know, beautiful story behind it. But it's your soul that's going to make that brand live on. Do you know what I mean? So I started selling it and doing that. But like I said, I came to a moment where okay. I was like, do I take the money that I've made from the brand, and that was like half a million, yeah. and plug it into my first film? Cool. Or do I carry on this journey where I feel that I've achieved what I've come to achieve? Oh, yeah. The vegan aisles in the skincare sector are beautiful now. They're flourishing. There's so many brands that have come and that have been birthed out of. And I'm not saying that I, am the, I was the first. That is the truth. That is documented. That is the truth. Recognize. But, you know... I feel that I, my presence encouraged 
other established brands and, and new emerging brands to look at their ingredients, look at how we're testing, testing on humane skin, um, bringing in, you know, I made mango butter foundation with 16 shades, nine of which were for Asian and black women. And that was in 2012. You know, so I've been there and I've been through that journey. But it is, it's about pivoting and, and, and understanding when you get to that place of mastery, is it about now, you know, jumping off the cliff into another mountain or do you want to grow and mature that brand? I decided that I was good with what I'd achieved, I'd enjoyed it, and I actually wanted to go to plan A. So that's why I'm talking about no plan B. So beauty, remember what I said to you, was born out of me not feeling like there was a place for me in film. So people say to me, Claire, you're gonna jump out of the you know, frying pan into the fire? You're going from beauty, one of the hardest industries where you've smashed it, killed it, made your name, and you're gonna start at the bottom and now go into film? And I was like, yeah, I've got one life to live. Like, why wouldn't I try? The industry, through all the works that my husband, Emmanuel, has been doing with Buff, has opened up. The brand is now a BAFTA award-winning festival, BIFA, AMA, African Movie Academy, which yep. is the uh, African equivalent to the Oscars. So there's a space now. So I actually became the sixth black female ever to have a film in the cinemas with my directorial debut, No Shade. Um, it's a romantic drama about colorism. It was in the audience. I only got six screens. Historically, they've only ever given black female directors, so the five before me and me, six screens. When you think about our male counterparts, get black men get about between 100 and 300. So I'm talking about Femi, Steve McQueen, and then our white counterparts get 500 or more. So how much are you expo expected to take at the box office with six cinemas? So thank God for Amazon. Thank God for Apple TV. Apple t Amazon, I had 16 million streams, downloads. 95% of that was African-American women. So I really know my audience, because they, they're they like, Claire, we, colorism, <laughs> brown paper bear. That's part of their culture. They talk about it on a daily basis. But I haven't been home. I haven't been to Nigeria to do a launch. I haven't shown it all over, you know, um, South America. I haven't even shown it. Some of you are probably sitting in there like, didn't I see something about that film? But I didn't. Actually, I've not actually seen it, Claire. Like, where is it? So there's still so much work to be done. I'm about to embark on my second feature. I'm writing TV. I've got a big, massive announcement to share. Again, this is family, so don't go and post this on social media yet. But you are looking at the new director of Hollyoaks. <laughs> Tell anyone <laughs> until I tell everyone <laughs> next month. But you know, sometimes that's what it is. It's a leap of faith. You know, it's still very, very hard for us to exist in film. It's gonna be hard no matter what you do. But you have to follow your heart. You have to understand when you get to a place where there's no more plan B's. I'm no longer. Uh, you know, I wasn't looking for validation or permission when I started pre-me, which was a plan B idea. But definitely now with no plan B, and we're still working through this trajectory of diversity and inclusion, systemic racism, um, black on black, you know, crabs in a barrel, us not buying from each other, supporting each other, actually seeing, oh, no, no, no. So what are we doing? So then how are we supposed to really, because the way we treat ourselves is, is, a ref, is how others are going to treat us. We cannot expect people to buy from us and support us to become mature brands, establishment brands. I'm talk, when I say mature, I'm talking about 50 years and plus. Yeah, it's good to clap for ourselves for five years. It's good to make a couple hundred thousand. I'm talking about multi-million. I'm talking about 50 years in the business. But again, we have to give ourselves grace. We're not as, as old as African-Americans who have been there for 500 years. Some of us have just arrived. Some of us have only been there for five years. Some of my parents have been there, what, 40 years. It's not a long time. But look at the impact that we're having, yeah? So, lastly, I just want to say to you about character and the lessons. You know, JC read off, you know, just some of my accomplishments. And you know, you're like, I don't even know that girl. It, it feels like even things that happened like months ago, I'm like, rah, did I do? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because life is just constantly, constantly, constantly going. And actually, there's a lot more failure happening in the background. But I think, I can't remember who says it, it might even be Henry Ford, but it's about failing and failing and failing without losing enthusiasm. Because that is it. People say, leave your job, start your business, yep. you know. You know, Beyonce lyrics, don't break my song and I'll leave my job. And then, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Because when you leave your job, do you have the character to continue okay, so, so, when you didn't make any sales yeah, today? So, uh, How did you function? Okay, How are you going to pay your rent, your mortgage? How are you going to feed your children? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, you need to have parameters in place in here. Because here and here is how we succeed. If any one of these two things are not working in tandem for you, your, that failure will be persistent and will take you down. How you overcome failure is admitting your wrongs, looking at the places where you're weak. One big thing is stopping the cheap nature, trying to get things on a deal, trying to do a little cut. No, sometimes take the stairs, sometimes take the scenic route. This feels hard, but at the end of it, I know the goal. Again, I just asked another entrepreneur in here, yeah. What's your goal? What do you want to do with the brand? Because until she knows, everything around it is going to be, I don't know, too. So the sooner you can get to a knowing, a place of intrinsic, like, this is my intention, this is where I see myself going, and that's how I said to you I was able to squeeze 20 years of work into five years. I knew every year, what do I want to do? And then when that was happening, you know, instead of five years, it's happening within 12 months. All right, boom. All right, next thing. OK, and then next thing, and then next thing. Even though I was uh, failing, even though people were, you know, I had to fire staff. Staff were stealing from me. I remember one time catching a staff member with like 20 products in her bag. And I looked on her and I thought, but you know me. You know I would give you that. So why would you even steal, you know? But to bounce back and say, all right, thank you very much. Take care and not slap someone in their head. Because the old school Claire from Islington would have punched somebody in their face. But you know what I mean? You have to mature, you have to change, you have to develop. I know I got MBE, I ain't got time to be going nowhere. Do you know what I mean? So it's all of that development, that character, those lessons. So I am Dr. Claire Anyamo Seagray, BEM. And if you've got any questions.